Girl's Guide to Greatness, yet another episode here with Angel Santiago. And I asked him to be on the show because he's, he's been with us before, um, once before, about a year ago. And I said, you know what? It's been almost a year since you've been on the show. I would love for you to come on the show, talk to the audience and share what you've been up to and how your life has changed post COVID, right? So um, Angel, so I'm so thankful that you're on the show. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so much, yeah. You know, it's last time we talked, you know, I don't know if, how much I mentioned this, but I had just gone through a breakup, like right in the middle of COVID. Like May. I remember. Yeah. Wow. Like, you know, I when we help clients, we do it in 90 day strategies, like 90 day, 90 days at a time. You know, the first 90 days, I would say May, June, July, August, was very busy with doing my own sessions. Like I was working with a therapist, like a, not a therapist, but like a practitioner in Argentina. And I did three, two and a half hour sessions within those first two months on, on understanding my abandonment. You know, that was like probably the biggest thing that came up in that three year relationship that I needed to work on, that I needed to figure that out. Once I understood how far back it went, you know, uh, in my ge genealogy tree, like my grandparents, great grandparents, <clears throat> I had to do like different rituals with different ancestors to understand that wound, you know? And then after that, one of my favorite stories from that healing period was a friend of mine, a local guy here in, in San Antonio, he's kind of like a mystic. Uh, he plays, uh, remember the Pearl? The, uh, oh, the yes. Pearl? So he, right. he plays like the didgeridoo and he plays, he's like a one man band, but he's like, he's like a mystic. And he was like, I went to go hang out with him one day. And he's like, hey man, I want to take you to the river in San Marcos, or actually in the Braunfels. I want to do a, a water ritual with you. Water ritual, but I trust him. So I was like, "Yeah, whatever, you, whatever you want to do with me, man, I'm down." Like, so we took the trip. We went to the to New Braunfels. We went to the river. Man, he he did this ritual with me where like he had me take deep breath in and like he started basically like the joke is like he he waterboarded me basically. Okay. Like I was like breathing in water and like he was throwing water in my face, water in my chest. I could, oh, like, wow. Yeah, and the whole time I'm standing there with my eyes closed, breathing. I was like. I got, I got to stay put. I got to take this. I got to find my peace within this. And what was interesting about that ritual is that I was immediately transported to moments where I was having arguments with my ex-girlfriend and I couldn't keep my peace. I couldn't keep my calm. So every hit of the water, every hit of the water was like something that was happening from her to me. Right. And so like moments that I lost my cool, I was like, I got to keep my cool. I got to find my calm. Right. And then, then he proceeded to put me underwater. He had me take deep breath in and he would put me underwater to hold my breath, let go of the, of the air underwater, he'd bring me back up. And then the, one of the last times where he like told me to let go of my air, I thought he was gonna bring me back up. He took me even further down in the water. Oh, so that's I'm scary. There, yeah, so I'm sitting there without any breath and I'm like, okay, I gotta find my peace here too. So it was an exercise of really finding my peace in a very difficult moment, you know? And how can I do that in my everyday life, right? right? And then the culmination of those first 90 days ended up in a, in a, in a closure conversation with my ex uh, via FaceTime where no matter what she threw at me, I kept my peace, I kept my cool, I was strong. Like nothing could like sway me, trigger me, or move me. So that was a huge, huge win. And after that, I, th I say over the, past, the next six months, it was constantly being tested via strangers friends, coworkers, family members, uh, all kinds of my boss, supervisors, owners of companies that I work for, like in, in, in setting boundaries, having crucial conversations, saying no, uh, checking in, make sure that I wasn't like, my voice wasn't cracking, my stomach wasn't, you know how that, that feeling yeah. in your stomach, like that I wasn't having that, that my hands weren't shaking. It's been, it's been, a way to like to really learn how to set boundaries for myself you know which that's is amazing that i hadn't done before you know this is something that my ex-girlfriend taught me one of the biggest blessings that she brought to my life is how to like how to choose me because being a people pleaser you know for most of my life i was always choosing other people at first mm -hmm. putting other people first and sacrificing myself for others right and this year has been a year the COVID year up until now has been a year of of choosing me, you know, and it's been amazing. It's been amazing. 
Wow, that's crazy. Okay, and this all stemmed from like this different kind of out of the box water therapy. I've never heard of that before. Right, right, right. Well, it was one of the many things I did. One of the many things, yeah. Mm -hmm. To kind of spark it, to kind of go down that path. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. I think that's important too, Angel, what you said is that a lot of people, I think, put others before themselves and they don't know how to say no. They don't really know how to create healthy boundaries and then they Mm -hmm. sacrifice their health for that. They sacrifice Mm -hmm. their peace their mental stability, their emotional stability. And it's really sad. Um, and so I think it's great that you have that you have your coaching business that you work with, that you actually help people like that. And that mm-hmm. since you've gone through your own journey, now you're able to help others with theirs. So I just, I think exactly. that's Exactly. <laughs> oh, one thing about boundaries that I didn't know and that I learned over the past, you know, probably within the first three months of, of me starting this healing journey of this last breakup, was that boundaries are not for the other person. The boundaries are for you. Mm. First, the boundary that you're setting is for you. For example, like if if I tell someone that I will not, I, I don't want you talking to me in this way. Like let's say you're having a confrontation or a conflict with someone. I don't appreciate you talking to me in this way and I need you to stop. Well, that's not a boundary. The other person doesn't have to stop talking to you that way. <laughs> the boundary is what are you going to do if that person continues to talk to you that way? So what I learned from this podcast was that if you do A, I am going to do B. So if you continue to do A, next time it happens, I'm the one that needs to do B, whether that's I am hanging up the phone or I'm walking away or I am not going to, whatever it is you're going to do, you're responsible for respecting your boundary, not the other person. Mm, that's good. The boundaries are for you. And that's something I didn't know that. The other thing I learned about people pleasing is that people pleasing is a form of dishonesty. And I've never thought about it that way because I've always been proud of being an honest person. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm people pleasing, I'm really not doing it for me. I'm really doing it for you. Right. You know, I don't want to. So I'm technically lying. Wow. It's a form of this. All these things became really clear for me. And it was just like, whoa, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's what that was, you know. That's interesting. And it's it's funny to, to hear you talk about these things, Angel, because I tend to go on the other side of where I think I put up maybe it's it's too easy for me to put up boundaries. It's too easy for me to say no sometimes. And I'm maybe brutally honest or maybe, you know, and I think I've gotten I've grown a lot over the past few years and being aware of, you know, how I come off sometimes. And so I've definitely gotten better, which is great. Um, but I think I'm on the other side of where um, I don't really try to people please as much, but um, maybe come off a little too, like, too honest and to the point where, like, for, for instance, I'll give you, for instance, Angel. So um, I'm just like, you know, if, if I see someone and they're complaining about a certain situation and I'm like, well, you know, you can do something about that, right? And they're like, sometimes those people don't want to hear the solution. And then right. I'm over here trying to like get them to see a solution. And it's like, come on, guys, you know, we're not in seventh grade anymore. We're adults. We can actually, you know, so those, sometimes those, you know, the tone of my voice can come off a little weird. But I've definitely, I think, in, in my defense, I've gotten a lot better. And I, and it's like you said before, it's like all part of that journey, right? As, as far as growing as adults, and you know, whether it be putting up those boundaries and, and being less of a people pleaser or the opposite of where maybe I can kind of hit the brakes a little bit, be a little bit more compassionate, be a little bit more understanding, listen more versus speaking, you know, that sort of thing. So those are the things that I've kind of learned over the past few years. And it's, um, those are huge takeaways because I've actually yeah. seen the results from them. Um, I actually did way better in my career because I started paying t- attention to that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, that's awesome. And I think it's really important to do that and to kind of like check ourselves all the time because there's there's always something we could be doing a little bit better, a little bit better. And I think in my journey, what I've, what I've had to be okay with, a huge thing of the people pleasers is we don't ever want to be the bad guy. Right. We don't ever want to be the bad parent or the bad friend or the bad employee or the bad boyfriend or the bad whatever. We don't ever want to be the bad guy. We don't ever want to disappoint anybody. And I had to learn that, you know what, I'm I'm OK if you want to see me as the bad guy. Like, that's not my intention. That's not what I'm doing. But if you choose to see me that way, I'm OK with that, because like they always say you can't please everybody. Right. And, and if me and if me choosing me causes you pain, 
I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. You know, that was not my intention. But I, I sometimes you have to really do what's best for you, especially when it's not health. When you're in a situation that is not right. healthy for you, or for or for those closest to you. You know. Yeah, and I think that's important to realize that that um, and I think that's a huge part of you know paying attention to our journeys because if you're not paying attention, you will wake up 10, 15 years later in the same exact spot. You're still hurting. You're still putting out way too much energy and way too much effort, and that person or situation still hasn't changed. And it's like, wow, I sacrificed my time, my love, my energy for this person, this situation, and I didn't get anything in return. Or very little and i'm now waking up to that that fact so yeah, i hope yeah. that the message that we can give out to people today is don't wait too long to take a step back and realize like okay what can i do differently here right, right? yeah i mean i like to tell people this do you want to know what your future will look like and people are going to like yeah i would love to know what my future looks like just look at your life today you won't look any different than this unless you do something different today yeah it's really that simple if you want to know what your future looks like, look at your life today. You want it to be different, do something different today. Otherwise, nothing will change. Absolutely. And I'm all for, like, I, I love helping others and I love giving to others um, because I think we all do because it makes us feel good, right? It's almost kind of like a, a selfish thing almost because I want to feel good. So I'm going to help others to feel good almost. But I do enjoy that and um, that part of it. However, I tend not to go too far with it where if I feel like I'm being, you know, um, taking advantage of or if they're trying to overextend my kindness or something like that or walk over me, or, no, that's not going to happen. And so um, I think it's important to kind of know where that line is and um, just make sure it's okay to, to give and to love and all that good stuff. But if it's going to, if people are constantly blocking you from your success or blocking you from your growth, those are red flags to me. What, I don't know, what are you thinking, Joel? <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely. Like you have to kind of look at who's around you and, and that goes with anything, people, situation, opportunities, anything. If, 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 if the thing or people or situation is gonna give you time, money and resources to get to where you're going, then you should definitely do that. But if it's taking away time, if it's taking away resources, if it's taking away money, then maybe that, that shouldn't be part of your life. And so that's what's called decluttering your life. Declutter, because I mean, there's some, sometimes we do things that seem like they're, they're getting us somewhere, but they're busy work or they're, um, they're easy to do is what I'm used to is what I'm good at. But, but the thing that really challenges or the thing that really going to push us forward because it is challenging, we don't do it. You know, it's, it's just, our relationship to failure, the way we have relationship to failure, that's why a lot of us don't take a lot of risk because mm -hmm. we don't want to fail. And right. failure has been, it's a, it's a huge thing in society where it's like, failure is not an option. What do you mean? <laughs> like, if failure isn't an option, then success isn't either then. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get to success without the failure. So it's like, we got to be able to take those risks. And I understand, I understand what it feels like to have fear and not take a chance. You know, before I ended my relationship last May, I tried ending it three other times before that. And I, I wasn't strong enough to do it. The fear took over. You know, I understand what it's like to have fear and not do something and, and be scared of taking that step or taking that risk. It's like, but if you can't do it yet, that's fine. If you're not ready to do it yet, then keep working on yourself. Keep training. Keep, keep growing yourself so that you can be bigger than your fear because the fear never goes away. The fear is always going to be there. You know, it's just that you you get much bigger than your fear. So therefore uh, the fear feels smaller. I like it was, that. It was always there. Right. So that's what we gotta do. Yeah, I love that that kind of um play where you know I kind of like to imagine myself getting bigger and expanding and my fear shrinking. I actually yeah. wrote a book called The The Three Giants, How to Claim Your Promised Land back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And in that book, it's kind of like the same thing. I um I go to cross into my promised land that God said I could have, but all of a sudden these giants are out there blocking me from my promised <laughs> land. And each giant has its purpose. And at the, at the moment in time that I wrote that book, I was battling with certain things in my life, and that's what the giants represented and so i went through these battles with each one to knock yep. them down and every time yep. i would face them my giants got smaller and smaller before you know it i could pen them down easily and i won the battle so it's pretty it's because, cool it's because you got bigger yes oh i love that yeah the, the giants <laughs> i became the, the giant <laughs> yeah 
And that's exactly how I saw this last uh, challenge for me. This relationship, this was one of the one of one of those giants for me. And it's like the David and Goliath thing, you know, where like you have to knock it with a little stone, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you just have to find a way to get bigger than your than your fear, you know. And and then, and you say, hey, I'm gonna take you by the hand, and we're gonna do this together, because mm -hmm. courage needs the fear. Otherwise, it's not courage. So. Interesting. It's an interesting way of looking at it. And I have to agree with you. Um, I know I got asked a lot when I first started my journey to travel the world right in the middle of COVID and people thought I was insane. And they're like, aren't you scared of dying? And are you scared of getting sick and all this other stuff? I'm like, no, I've that even crossed my mind. I'm like, why? And so um, I was just so thankful that, um, like you were saying, that I did have courage, um, that I was brave enough, that I had faith. I believe it, that had a lot to do with it as well. And that I looked at the bigger picture and if this is the end of times or whatever you want to call it, then I'm going to go out with, you know, facing my fears and doing what I love. And that's what I wanted to do at the time. And so thank goodness, because now one year later, um, it was kind of funny because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for a whole year now, traveling and doing my business. I've been retired from corporate for over a year. And I'm just like, wow, I actually did it. I can't believe this. This is amazing. And I'm so glad I did it at that time because yeah. now I get to reflect back and say, I was one of the few that decided not to lean into fear, but decided to go for my dream, despite what the world was saying. Um, so it's pretty, in my opinion, I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is freaking awesome. And to tell you the truth, you know, just recently we just, we do a, we do a quarterly conference at the company that I work for, Freedom Practice Coaching. and. In my class, I usually try to get people to share and, and get on the Zoom and be spotlighted and they can share something vulnerable about themselves. And and not only there, but in other situations too, time and time again, the thing that seems so big, then you do it and it's like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Right. It always, always, always is like, yes. I, I remember after the breakup, I was driving around and like feeling myself in this space. It was just like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, you know, like I'm okay. And, 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 and I'm, I'm starting to thrive. And it's just like more, more often than not, whatever it is you're afraid of, whatever you think is this big thing that you can do, just do it. Cause it, you're, yeah. you're psyching yourself out. You're the one creating the story. Yes. that is really, really scary. And I believe that it probably feels that way to you in that moment, mm -hmm. but do it anyway. Chances are, you're going to be like, Oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Oh my goodness. Totally. And I right. have to say, yeah, because Angel know exactly what we're talking about because, um, you know, since I was a young teen mom, I had, I was kind of thrown into the fire of having to grow up fast and to face my fears and all that stuff. So I think I had an advantage that a lot of people don't because other people have the, I guess, more of a choice to kind of like move to the next level. But I was kind of thrown into there. Not if I was forced. I was like, Oh God, I've got to grow up. I've got to make things happen. And then, um, so I think I had an advantage there. And then as I was like building up my career and, and becoming, trying to be, be a good mom and all these different things, those situations like you're talking about where I had built up this fear in my head, like, Oh dear God, am I going to get through it? And then, um, I actually came up with this technique that I came up with on the spot. I was about to go into a scary situation and I told myself, all right, Rebecca, what is this going to be? Like two minutes of your whole entire life. You can handle two minutes, right? So I was kind of talking myself into it, right? And so I said, I tell you what, just count down to three, take a deep breath and just go for it. And I did. I, at the moment, I took a deep breath. I closed my eyes. I said, three, two, one, <laughs> jump. I did it. And, and it was so crazy, Angel. Nothing happened. Nothing yeah. happened. Nothing I happened. was like, are you serious? I had this huge story in my head thinking the worst thing was going to happen and nothing happened. It was actually a good experience. Yeah. At the end. What you did is you challenged your story. You were, you were willing to challenge your story. And I, I want to encourage anybody who listens to this to challenge the story, because if it's coming from a place of fear, it's probably not true. You know, it's probably not true. You've, you've made it out in your head to be much bigger than what it is. Right. Take that deep, that deep breath and count to three. And I think there's a movie that says at any point in time, when you have a, an opportunity to be courageous, all it takes is 20 seconds of bravery to just mm -hmm. go in there and just do yeah. it. And you're like, oh. See, I like the 20 seconds. That's shorter than my two minutes. <laughs> yeah, 20 seconds. I can do 20 seconds. So, like, like if you and I are, uh, are at a cliff and we're going to jump into, into a, a, a body of water from way up there, 
that's scary. That feels scary. Yeah. But what, what do we usually do? Like, we're like, okay, come on, come on, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. And we just go. Yeah. And then it's over. It's just like, oh, that was so much fun. You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I have to share this something with you, Angel. There was actually one point in time I was in my late twenties and, um, I used to love roller coasters when I was a kid, but as you get older, I think there's kind of like something that happens. But anyways, for me, I didn't want to do any more roller, co roller coasters. I was just scared to death. I was like, no, I can't do it. And my daughter loves roller coasters. And so I actually started um, facing my fears one at a time. And so there's a specific ride at SeaWorld in, um, in San Antonio, and it's called the Steel Eel. <laughs> there's nothing really big about or crazy about it. It's just a normal roller coaster. Um, and so I said, we walked past it. I was like, I was stopped. I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. We just kept going, just kept going. Then we walked past it again later on and I just stopped. I was like, oh, forget it. Let's just do it. Let's just get it over with. I have to face my fear. And we did it. I screamed my head off the whole time, but I did it and I survived and I felt good that I finally did it. Yeah. And that kind of sparked something. So every time I came across something that I was fearful of, I was like, oh no, I'm not going to let that win. I'm going to go and I'm going to do this thing. And I did the same thing over and over. So um, I wanted to go to, I wanted to go to Dominican Republic to go scuba diving, but I didn't know how to swim very well. No one really taught me how to swim. And so instead of just giving up on that dream, I actually took a swim class. I had there the best go. swim teacher. I made new friends and became a great swimmer. Well, a decent swimmer. And so then I go to Dominican Republic and check this out. I jump in the water without any fear, without any hesitation. I had a great experience. I come back up and notice there's a girl just sitting in the water. She didn't go down with us. And she said, oh my God, how did you learn how to do that? And I said, I took a class. I came prepared. I was ready. <laughs> you know. And she's like, oh my goodness, that was amazing. And so I think that's another a little tip for people is just to prepare yeah. for it. Right. Do, do, do some research, take a class, you know, get ready for it. Like it's, it's really, you're right. It really is that. And I'm glad you mentioned roller coasters because one of the last things I want to share is that, you know, we, some the people that do love roller coasters, because there's people that do love, I'm one of those people. I love drill. <laughs> Imagine if that roller coaster didn't have the downs. It would suck. That ride would absolutely suck. Right. That becomes so, like a children's train ride. <laughs> yeah, it, it sucks. So, and there's a video that I posted in my Instagram of uh, a metal ball, two metal balls on two separate tracks. One of them goes on a, on a flatter track, and the other one goes on an up and down track. And guess which ball gets further ahead? Oh, the up and down one. The up and down one. Nice. It goes much faster, and it goes further ahead than nice. the one without the ups and down, proving that you get much further in life with ups and downs. I love this. You have to learn how to thrive in your downs because how you handle your downs determines how your up is going to be. Right. So like, it builds momentum. It, it builds momentum. And so your ups, the up is just a result of how you handle the, like the previous down. Right. You don't, we don't do much in the up. It's just a result. Yeah. Okay, this is a perfect way to end the show then, um, Angel, because as we're like reflecting back and how far we've both come since uh, the, you know COVID, this is this is a great way to say, hey, we went through the down, now we're in the up. In and the like, up. oh, this is great. 2021, we're in the up, guys. Yeah. And, the, <laughs> and the trick is that you don't want you don't want this. You don't want a big gap between right. the up and the down. Totally. You want a more in the middle kind of Absolutely. ride. Up. You still want the ups and downs. Right, right, right. You don't because People like to stay there, like complaining and like wallowing in their down. So they drag it out. Yeah. Instead of finding, okay, what is the wisdom? What is the power within this down that I could, that could draw it out to launch me up into my up, you know? That's a beautiful thing. Actually, Angel, we're taught the same thing. When I was going through my personal training classes, I was taught that it's um, most people when they, when they don't eat breakfast or they skip a meal or eat junk, you know, junk in the morning or straight to coffee and donuts, their blood sugar will spike. And then all of a sudden it goes down because they skip a meal again. And it's so you have this big up and down and we're trying to get away from that. They said it's more, you got to be more towards the middle, right? Exactly. So I think that fits into every part, right? Of our lives to have a, a well-balanced and a, a, an amazing experience. I love that. A hundred percent. Angel, you're the best. I love talking yeah. with you because you always yeah. give me these different insights and the perspectives and it's just exciting stuff. So thank you so much for sharing. I truly yeah. appreciate it. Of course. I love to do it again. Just let me know. Yeah. And then where can people find you? Because obviously you have great wisdom to share with the world. So any any social media platform, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, 
I got on Clubhouse. I'm, I'm, I haven't quite that dove in yet, but I'm there as well. Uh, but look up the hashtag, hashtag Life Coach Angel, and you'll find it. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you again, Angel. And thank you so much, everybody, for listening in and watching the Girl's Guide to Greatest podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, everybody.